Hey there, Hawks. Good morning. Um, I wanted to make this video for you guys. Uh, now that we are at Act 4 of the play, we are almost done. We have Act 4 and Act 5 left to read, and Act 5 is pretty short. So we are getting really into the thick of the play at this point. And there's kind of been a topic that we've been dancing around a little bit. Obviously, we know straight from the beginning of the play that Romeo and Juliet choose to take their own lives at the end and uh, die by suicide. And it's kind of a really heavy topic to talk about, um, but it's one that I think is really important to discuss. And it's kind of hard for me to do this over video, I really, really wish that I was reading this with you guys in person and could be in person to talk to you about this really difficult topic. Um, but I think it's super important that we have kind of a real conversation about it. So far, we've been talking about it in the context of the play, obviously, um, but not really in any serious way, just knowing that that's what we're leading up to. Um, and it's almost been kind of comical uh, because sometimes we see the decisions that Romeo and Juliet are making uh, as very trivial and silly and like, oh my gosh, I'd never do that in real life. That's dumb. Um, but I want to talk to you today about the concept of suicide and mental health um, in a more real way. If we were together in class, I would have had us read a poem. Um, and it's a poem that I wrote, and at the end of the poem, we would have had a conversation um, about some personal experiences of mine. Um, so I guess we'll just skip right to that part because we don't need the whole reveal of the poem. Um, so my first year of teaching here at Laguna Hills, um, I lost a student to suicide. Um, her name was Deanna, and I had had her in my classroom for nine months. It was this time of year. She was just like you guys, had been sitting in my classroom for these many, many months and weeks, and I had gotten to know her very well. And um, about two weeks before the end of the school year, uh, she took her own life uh, right as we had just finished reading Romeo and Juliet. And this experience very much changed me as a person. Um, I can never teach this play the same way again. And I'll never casually be able to discuss this subject without thinking of her. Um, it's a very emotional thing for me to talk about. And I do talk about it every year because I think it is important. Um, I carry with me a lot of guilt that I uh, maybe in teaching this unit talked about Romeo and Juliet's choices in not a serious enough way. Um, maybe brushed it off too much as something that wasn't worth discussing meaningfully. And I regret that. And obviously I know logically, you know, there's probably nothing that I could have done differently. But it has made me realize that there are a few things I can do going forward um, that are different than what I did that year. And one of those things is that I wish I could sit down with her, with my student that I lost, and tell her things that I do get the chance to tell you guys. So I wish so much that we were doing this in person and that I could see your faces. Um, but I do wanna tell you that you are loved very much and that you matter. And that I know that sometimes things are really hard and it seems like there's no other option that there's no plan b that everything sucks so bad that you don't know how to handle it but i want you to know that you are so important and 
that this world needs you and that I need you and that life would absolutely not be the same without you, that you are so valued and so loved. And I hope that you never doubt that, but that if you do, please hear from my mouth that at least one person on this earth feels that way about you. And I know that you know that there are more people that feel that way about you too, that you are so, so special. And please don't ever doubt that. And if you do, please tell someone. Um, part of the reason that I carry such a burden of losing my student is that I was her. I was that person. Um, in high school and even into my early years of college, I was super depressed. I was suicidal. I felt those feelings that she felt. And I feel that there were probably warning signs that I should have seen, that I should have seen myself in her. Um, and so that's why I try to choose to talk about this every year, especially with reading this play. I think it's so important that we open our eyes to the hurt that other people are feeling and that we don't just stand by because it's awkward or it's painful or it's you're not sure what to do, um, that you really can be there for yourself if, if it's you that's feeling these feelings or be there for someone else. Um, and when we're reading Romeo and Juliet, it's so personal to me, this, this topic, this subject is so personal to me um, that I, I can't help but wanna talk about it in a really real way. So one thing that I'm gonna have us do is, is discuss um, the warning signs that we're seeing in the literature. Now there are not always, you know, very obvious warning signs if someone is depressed or feeling suicidal and want to hurt themselves, but sometimes there are. And Shakespeare, I like to refer to him as kind of a first wave psychologist. When he is writing about Romeo and Juliet, he includes these things. He includes real scientific you know, warning signs that something was wrong, that there were moments when someone could have intervened or people could have handled things differently. And so I'm gonna have us watch this video. Um, it was not made to go necessarily with Romeo and Juliet, but it's really relevant and it talks about the different warning signs of people who are experiencing um, mental distress, who are considering hurting themselves, who are considering choosing suicide as a path for themselves. And it's really relevant to obviously real life and also what we're reading and what we're seeing in Romeo and Juliet's story. So I'm gonna have you watch that video now. It's just a few minutes and they kind of talk fast. So maybe have a piece of paper or something in front of you or a Google Doc open where you could type down some stuff because when the video is over, I want you to, um, be able to talk about three different things from the video, three different warning signs that we could see of someone who is considering suicide. Not necessarily in Romeo and Juliet, but just three things from the video that they mention that you should be able to, or might be able to notice um, if you or someone else is considering that path. So I'm gonna link the video right here. I want you to watch it and then come back to this video and answer that question. Okay, so now that you've seen that video and you can watch it as many times as you need to, if you need to, um, I want you to answer the question, what are three possible warning signs that we might notice in someone who is considering suicide? Now, some of you guys might be really educated in this area, um, maybe from personal experience or just from learning about mental health, but there are a lot of warning signs, some of which are mentioned in the video and some of which might not be. So I wanna go over a few of them with you. Um, from the video, I'm sure you heard the one about people changing habits. So let's say somebody really loved soccer and art and they were super passionate about those things and now suddenly they're not passionate about them anymore maybe that's just a change in them as a person but changing um passions and things that someone is super into 
very suddenly could be a sign that they are considering hurting themselves. Um, we've seen other symptoms like a change in appetite or a change in sleeping pattern. Those are things that usually indicate that a person is depressed. Um, we have things like writing letters or saying goodbyes, giving away their possessions. That's a big red flag that someone is giving away something that was really valuable to them um, and kind of like almost like last will and testament, like giving away their stuff to their friends, giving away their prized possessions. You could consider big life events. So if they had something really tragic happen, like if they had a death in the family or a really bad breakup um, or something that was very traumatic happened in their life, that is also a red flag that you wanna keep an eye out for. Uh, one other thing that I want to mention is like isolating themselves from their friends. If you're really close with someone and suddenly they're not talking to you or someone seems like they're not confiding in anyone anymore and they're being very secretive, um, maybe even like you're noticing mood swings or really um, big changes in their personality. They're crying a bunch or they're usually a very emotional person and now they're very stoic and unemotional. Just basically any significant change that you're seeing in a person. And usually these things are happen. I mean, you guys are teenagers or people go through phases in their lives. But when something is going on like that for a period of two or more weeks, scientifically, psychologically, that is when it should be something that for us becomes a little bit concerning. So if you're seeing these things in your friends or if you're seeing them in yourselves, I want you to take notice and be aware and not be afraid, like the video says, um, to speak up and say something about it. One other thing that is notable is that this person who is depressed or suicidal might not be secretive about it. They might actually talk about it a lot. So if someone is talking about death or dying, if someone is constantly making offhanded comments like, whoops, gonna go kill myself, or um, you know, saying things like people would be better off without them, or uh, just talking about not being around or being dead or being gone, um, even in a joking way, whether it's joking or serious, that, you know, is an indication of where their mind is and what they're thinking about. And it's important not to just brush those things off. It, it's much better to say something and feel stupid or silly afterwards than to not say anything at all. And as the video said, it is absolutely not going to put an idea in someone's head. If you ask someone if they're thinking about hurting themselves, if they're okay, if they're thinking about killing themselves, saying that phrase out loud is so much more empowering um, than it is anything else. It absolutely has been scientifically proven that asking someone about their mental health and safety does not increase their chance of killing themselves or hurting themselves. If when I think back to when I was a teen, when I was struggling with these issues myself, oh my God, it would have been so much more helpful if someone had just come right out and asked me if I was thinking about hurting myself. I would not have been able to say no. I would have immediately said yes. I would have cried. I would have had some sort of reaction and I would have gotten help much faster and had a much easier time of things than what actually happened to me. It took me years and years and years to actually get help and I had to do it all on my own. If you had, if I had had someone to ask me if I was okay or offer to get me help, it would have been so much more of a relief. So don't ever be afraid to ask. Um, we're gonna transition a little bit from the video, but use that information. So what I want you to do now is I want you to think about our play and Romeo and Juliet. And Shakespeare was very crafty. He knew a lot of this information way ahead of his time. So I want you to think back through the whole play up until now, Acts 1, 2, and 3. I want you to think of two different situations in the play or two different examples from the play where Romeo or Juliet 
showed one of these warning signs? Was there ever a time where Romeo or Juliet displayed one of these behaviors or actions that could lead someone to suspect them of being suicidal? So what were two examples from Romeo and Juliet of a time where either of them displayed warning signs of being suicidal and what were they? So there were a bunch of examples I can think of and we'll go through a couple of them together. Um, if you wanna think about Romeo as being depressed at the very beginning of the play, you could. It talks about um, how his dad, Montague, and his cousin, Benvolio, were concerned about him, how he'd been locking himself in his room and being all quiet and moody, and he was depressed and um, over that relationship with Rosaline not working out, right? And then we see as Romeo and Juliet get involved, both of them are making lots of statements like, I'd rather die than not be with you. Or, you know, Romeo says at the balcony scene, um, let your family go ahead and kill me. If you don't love me, then my life doesn't matter. So right away, they were very, they were showing very extreme emotions for each other. Um, both Romeo and Juliet react really poorly when the news comes that Romeo was banished. Romeo literally in scene three of act uh, two, scene three of act three, tries to stab himself when he thinks that Juliet doesn't love him anymore, when he thinks that she looks at him as a murderer. And Juliet threatens repeatedly um, to end her life or to hurt herself if she can't be with Romeo or if her parents force her into the marriage with Paris. So there was multiple times where she says things like, make my bridal bed in the dim monument where Tybalt lies. Well, Tybalt's dead. She's basically saying, I'd rather die if I am forced into this marriage. And her parents don't exactly respond in a supportive way either. Her mother says, I'm done with you, do whatever you want. Her father threatens to disown her um in the midst of those really extreme feelings and then another big one for Juliet is when she no longer trusts the nurse when she isolates herself from the people that care about her she's hiding things and not confiding in her parents and the nurse whom she usually trusts she says that her heart is twain from her and that she no longer um, trusts her and relies on her so there are a lot of different examples from our real life video of warning signs that carry over to Romeo and Juliet. And we're not done with the play, right? So in these last two scenes, in scene four and scene five, I want you to continue to look for those warning signs. They're real life examples in Romeo and Juliet. And we talked at the beginning of the play how Shakespeare tells the story backwards like this, tells us how it's going to end on purpose at the beginning so that we can look and see what went wrong along the way. This is something we don't have the ability to do in real life. A play like Romeo and Juliet shows us where people go wrong when they're dealing with the ideas of mental health and with suicide. It's so important to be supportive of people and it really doesn't matter what the reason is. A lot of times we look at Romeo and Juliet and we think, man, that's a stupid reason to kill yourself. You're sad over a breakup. You're sad over a boy or a girl. That is not a good enough reason to end your life. Well, what I've learned over time is it doesn't matter. Why a person is suicidal does not matter. If they're clinically depressed, if they had a bad breakup, if their video game broke last night, it does not matter why. It only matters how we react to them because for them, that reason is very serious and very important, important enough to consider ending their own life. So for us, our job is to be supportive. Our job is to do what's right by them and not judge them for whatever reason they may or may not have for feeling that way. So we are going to see more of these examples in Romeo and Juliet and discuss also further um, what could have been done differently to come with a different outcome. How could Romeo and Juliet's story have been 
a happier ending. Before we go, before I end this video, um, I do want to talk about one more thing. Again, I'm really wishing that we could be having this conversation in person, but I want to offer you guys some ideas of what you should do if you run across some of these warning signs or symptoms with yourself or with a friend or a family member. It may be an awkward thing to do. So before we end this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about more of the real life aspect of this. We've discussed these warning signs. We've seen examples of them in Romeo and Juliet, but what do we do if we're experiencing it in real life? So if it's something that you yourself are going through or if you're seeing these warning signs in a friend or a family member. Like the video said, it could be awkward, it could be, you could be wrong, but asking someone straight out, are you thinking of killing yourself or are you thinking of hurting yourself is the best way to broach that conversation. I would much rather ask that of someone and then know that I care about them enough to ask and be wrong than to never have asked and wish that I did, right? You can't go back in time and change things. So it's much better to ask and be told no and be told you're silly, that's not what's happening, um, than to not ask at all. As teens, as young people, sometimes you guys don't have control over your lives as much as you would like. And sometimes you don't make the best decisions. I'm sure, I mean, I can say that about my teen self and I'm sure that you'll agree that not every teenager makes the best decisions for themselves. So as a friend, it is not okay to keep something this serious a secret. If you know that something's wrong, or even if you think that something's wrong with a friend or a family member, tell a trusted adult right? Tell a teacher, tell a school guidance counselor, tell a parent, tell their parent if it's someone else. I know that friends ask us to keep secrets for them or not to tell adults certain things, but in this case, I would so much rather a friend be mad at me for betraying their confidence and their trust, but be alive than to have kept a secret and lose that friend. So telling a trusted adult is a guaranteed way to get you more help than you're able to get on your own. Just being a listening ear sometimes, being a support to a friend is all that some people need. They feel like they're alone in things. To show people that they're not alone is another way you can help someone who is considering suicide. But really, ultimately, the one that I want to stress is if you feel like someone is in mortal danger, if you feel like this situation really is out of control and someone's going to hurt themselves, there are two things you can do. You can call the police. The police are an emergency resource, right? Calling 911 and saying that someone is going to hurt themselves or going to be hurt um, is what they're there for right? And the police are trained to handle this situation more than you or I are. The other thing you could do is take that person to the hospital to call 911 to have an ambulance come. Taking them to the hospital, hurting yourself is a mental health risk, emphasis on the health, and that's what a hospital is for. So going to medical professionals, going to professional people who know how to handle these things is always an option for you. And of course, getting into therapy or something of that effect is, is an afterthought, but making sure that they're safe first um, is the priority. Thank you guys for listening. And um, I just really wanna reaffirm one more time that the reason we're having this lesson is just, I wanna have you be well equipped to handle these things. I want you to know that it's okay to talk about them. I want you to know that I'm here for you. 
even though we're distant, you know, I, I really want you to know that you have someone who loves and cares about you and really values you and is so glad that you're here on this earth. Um, there is going to be a flip grid for extra credit. If you want to just leave a response to this lesson, you can pretty much say anything you want. I just kind of want to hear from you and there's extra credit for if you want to do that flip grid in response to this lesson. Okay. So reach out to me if you guys need anything. Um, I love you very much and we'll continue with our reading of Romeo and Juliet with this lesson in mind.